This video runs through an exam question on game theory. It's looking at a matrix for Sam who's driving a car in different road conditions. It's computer generated, it's a computer game. So Sam chooses a strategy, chooses a particular car in fact, and the computer will choose what the given road conditions are. Here we have the payoffs. So if Sam was to, for instance, choose car three, or strategy three here, and the computer was to choose strategy one, then Sam would gain five. It's Sam's matrix, he's the row player, so the higher the number, the better. If, however, Sam chose strategy one and the computer chose its strategy one, then Sam would lose two gain minus two. So this shows if the computer played C2 and Sam played C2 then Sam would gain four and so on. The first question asks to explain why Sam should never choose S1 and why the computer should never choose C3. Well we only never choose a strategy if there's another strategy, an alternative strategy, that is always better or at least as good. So if we compare here, we can see that if we compare S1 with S2, minus 2 is worse than 2 for Sam. 2 is worse than 4, and 4 is worse than 5. So actually Sam would always choose S2 over S1. If we compare S1 with S3, although on the first one it's a better outcome for Sam, it's a bigger gain than he would have with playing S2 if the computer plays C1. When we look at the next one along, we see that, the, that Sam's gain of 2 with S1 is not as good um, with S3 as it, he would only gain 1. So here we see that actually S1 is better if the computer plays C2. So we would, wouldn't say that S3 dominates S1, but S2 does. It dominates because it's always better or the same as. So we write up here S1 dominated by S2 and probably worth writing the values so minus 2 is less than 2 2 is less than 4 and 4 is less than 5 we then take a similar approach with the computer's choices we can see here the computer wants smaller numbers so we're looking at why the computer wouldn't choose C3 well if you look at C2 4 is higher than 2, so that's worse for the computer. 5 is higher than 4, and 2 is higher than 1. So, here we can write C3 dominated by C2. And again, put the values in. 4 greater than 2, 5 greater than 4, and 2 greater than 1. OK, so that's part A answered for two marks. For part B, it says find play-safe strategies for the reduced 2 by 2 game. So let's start by writing what's left. We've lost all of S1 and all of C3, so that only leaves 2 and the 4 and the 5 and the 1. It just leaves these four elements here, doesn't it? Now, to a play-safe strategy is to look at each strategy for the row player and each strategy for the column player and find the worst-case scenario, and we then pick the best of the worst. So, if Sam plays S2, then the worst case scenario is that he gains 2 and if Sam plays S3 
then the worst case scenario is that he gains 1. We then pick the best of those, which is clearly 2, because remember the higher numbers are better for Sam. And because we look for row minimums, and we look for the maximum of the row minimums, that's a maxi min, and it's the row maxi min. For the computer, we're looking at C1 and C2. And we look at the column, and the worst case scenario are the higher numbers for the computer. So the maximum there is 5, and the maximum there is 4, and the best is the smallest. So we pick out the smallest of the column maximums. So it's column, and it will be mini max, the minimum of the maximum. So that's the first part. It then says, hence show that the game does not have a stable solution. Well, no or not stable solution. As row maxi min. doesn't equal column mini max and I suppose you probably don't need to but that's 4 that was 2 wasn't it 2 obviously doesn't equal 4 so that's that bit done so 6 marks in the bag right part C Sam uses Random numbers to choose S2 with a probability of P and S3 with a probability of 1 minus P. So, in other words, the probability of S2 is P here and 1 minus P for S3. It, it then says, find expressions for the expected gain for Sam when the computer chooses each of its two remaining strategies. Well, if the computer plays C1, Sam will gain 2P plus 5 times 1 minus P. So if we do that over here, so that's if the computer plays C1. If the computer plays C2, then it will be 4P plus 1 times 1 minus P. And we can simplify those. We get 2 minus 5P, which is minus 3P plus 5 for that one. And 4P minus P is 3P plus 1 for that one. And that's it for the first three marks of that. So that's nine marks now. For II, it says calculate the value of P. Well, you might want to draw a little graph here. If you just sketch it, just so we can see what's going on. Now, we've got P on this axis and V on this axis. P goes between 1 and 0. And then here, well for the first one, minus 3P plus 5. So it will start at 5, that's the intercept, isn't it, when P is 0. And go down 3, which takes it down to 2. Always write these values on the end. You'll notice they're always in the mark scheme. And that's the line, I'll write it at the end here, minus 3p plus 5. 
And then for the other line, it starts at 1 and it goes up 3. So that value there will be 4 and that value there will be 1. And that's the line 3p plus 1. What we then do is we shade off the bits above the line. So we shade off all of our lines. In this instance, we only have two. And we have a feasible region underneath. And what we're looking for is the highest point in the feasible region, which is this vertex here. And that will give us our V value there and our P value here. So we need the intersection of these two. So if we move over here, we have minus 3p plus 5 equals 3p plus 1. So 6p equals 4. So p equals 2 thirds. And we could have worked that out just with the simultaneous equations without the graph. But you're often asked to draw the graph, so it's handy to see what's going on there. So this value here is two thirds. And to find the V value for this last mark here, all we simply do is put our two thirds into one of the equations. So if we use 3P plus 1, that gives us 3 times 2 thirds plus 1. Well, 3 times 2 thirds is 2, isn't it? So it's 3. So Probably best to write it the way it is in the question. Gain for Sam equals 3. The only other thing that they sometimes ask for is the mixed strategy. And what we say for that is that Sam plays... In other words, the probability that he plays S2 equals two-thirds. And the probability that he plays S3 would equal one minus two-thirds, which is, of course, one-third.